Hello everyone, Sky here and today, after a giant jumbo, we're having a bit simpler plane. Though, make no mistake, this airliner is very interesting, especially considering Boeing's plans for the future. Boeing 757 is a twin-engine single-aisle airliner developed in the early 1980s. Capable of accommodating up to 295 passengers, this aircraft is the largest in its class. It would be awesome, but the plane is no longer in production. From the company's history, we already know that Boeing finished it in 2004. Let's take a look at this bird. Fasten your seatbelts and prepare for takeoff. In the early 1970s, Boeing brought its flagship model 747 to the market. Not without problems, as we know. Today's most popular aircraft, Boeing 737, at that time did not shine with the sales records too. The main aircraft and source of the money income for the company was Model 727, and the guys in Seattle thought how to improve this plane. Initially, it was assumed that the aircraft will undergo a profound modernization, become more spacious and efficient. The plan was not bad. The future Boeing 727-300 seemed quite nice in the short term, but only in the short term. It was the beginning of the 1970s when technology took a long step forward, especially in the jet engine industry. The Boeing 747 received engines, in comparison to which the predecessor seemed ancient. The same was true of materials and many other technology. Having such a number of bonuses, the developers understood that by using them, they can achieve much greater results. There was just one problem. Boeing had to develop a completely new aircraft, which means new development, production and money. A lot of money. In the beginning, this idea was not supported. Airlines were quite satisfied with 727-300 and the company was in debt after the creation of the 747. However, basic research was carried out and the performance indicators of the Project 7 and 7 were published. These estimates were very impressive. In fact, having just announced the Model 727-300, Boeing almost immediately made it obsolete. The public and potential customers were waiting for the 7 and 7. The project was initiated in the mid-1970s, and they managed the financial difficulties in quite a tricky way. The Project 7 and 7 was implemented in parallel with another already launched Project 7X7. So, the story of two brothers began. 7 and 7 grew into the Boeing 757 and 7X7, as you might guess, into the Boeing 767, the company's first twin-engine wide-body airliner. By 1978, the work was concentrated on two basic models, 7N7-100, designed for 160 seats, and 7N7-200, designed for 180 seats. The aircraft had to receive a brand new wing and engine suspended on pylons but nothing radical. The fuselage and the T-tail were taken from the Boeing 727. The time benefited the new project. A series of oil crises had risen the fuel costs, and this had increased the demand for more economical airliners. 707 was supposed to be lighter and burn 20% less fuel than its competitors while being more capacious. The starting customers were Eastern Airlines and British Airways. In 1979, they signed the first contracts for the Model-200. That is when the official index was announced, Boeing 757. At the same time, the Dash 100 model did not receive orders and the work on it was cancelled. A curious fact, one of the starting customers was British Airways, and of course the guys with suits and umbrellas did not forget their friends. The airline ordered planes with Rolls-Royce RB211 engines. British engines. It was the first time when Boeing originally created a plane with a non-American power plant. Also later, of course, the 757 started using the American Pratt Whitney PW2037. The affinity with the Boeing 767 project had a huge impact on the plane. Elements of the wing, avionics, cabin and many other solutions were developed for both airliners, and they were pushing out more and more old elements of the 727. First of all, this can be attributed to the nose section. It's supposed to be a narrow body aircraft, but its nose doesn't resemble other Boeing planes of this class. Everything is simple, the cockpit and equipment, also created for the 767s, just wouldn't fit into the old nose section. One of the important achievements was the creation of a highly effective wing. 
Based on the technology of the 747s, Boeing managed to create a more aerodynamically advanced design, which in addition contained more fuel. The cruise speed was about 460 knots or 850 km per hour. Like other narrow-body Boeing aircraft, the new plane was assembled at a factory in Renton, where it fully replaced the 727 after several years. The first Boeing 757 prototype passed the rollout ceremony in January 1982. A month later the plane made its maiden flight. The test lasted 7 months. Here again, the brotherhood with the Boeing 767 was very useful. The tests of many systems were greatly accelerated, because the systems were in fact already tested on another plane. An additional bonus was the fact that the aircraft exceeded its calculated indicators. It was one and a half tons lighter, and the range was more than planned by 370 kilometers. The plane with Rolls-Royce engines was certified in 1982. The Pratt-Whitney engines began to be installed two years later. Boeing paid a lot of attention to the weight reduction. The design of the airframe uses composite elements and improved aluminum alloys. Now, of course, it's not surprising, but don't forget, those were the 1980s. The interior has a classic for the Boeing narrow-body airliners configuration. Six seats in a row, three plus three. The capacity of the luggage compartments were almost doubled in comparison to the Boeing 727. In 1998, with the creation of the 757-300 version, the cabin was modernized, in parallel with the 737NG cabins and the new 777. The Boeing 757 has a several major modifications. 757-200, basic and most popular. 913 of total 1050 aircraft are of this version. On its basis were created two cargo planes, 757-200PF and the modernized 757-200SF, as well as the convertible 200M. Version 757-300 received an extended fuselage and only had a passenger version. Of course, such an airplane has a special modifications. The Boeing 757 is quite popular in aerospace research. Various versions at different times participated in tests of many systems, including military. Sometimes this lead to quite an amusing images. But the most famous aircraft are, of course, the VIP and government planes. In the United States, the most VIP is C-32. The version created on the basis of Boeing 757-200 for the US Air Force. The C-32A is designed to transport government officials and is often referred as the Air Force II. In addition to these four planes, the Air Force has also two C-32B with a cabin for 45 people. It is the favorite vehicle of the Department of State. They can easily be told apart externally. Air Force II has liveries like the presidential boards. The planes of the American Foreign Ministry looks undecorated. Without looking at the small inscriptions, you won't even understand whose planes these are. And probably the most pompous aircraft for probably the most pompous men. Boeing 757 VIP was used as a personal board by Donald Trump and even had its own name, Trump 1. Yes, this guy is not dying from modesty. Well, let's see how well it all flies. The commercial flights of the Eastern Airlines' first planes were started in early 1983. All operators quickly reported a significantly better performance in comparison with the predecessors. On average flights, Boeing 757's cost per seat was 42% cheaper than that of the Boeing 707. In the late 1980s, the cargo versions were created, which boosted sales. Also, Boeing 757 actively replaced the Model 707 and 727, as well as the DC-8 on domestic flights in the United States. By the beginning of the 1990s, Delta Airlines and American Airlines already had 100 aircraft of this model each. In 1986, the FAA expanded the capabilities of the Boeing 757 by providing the ETOP certificate, allowing it to fly over the North Atlantic. It was great news for the plane. Now it flew from the United States to Europe, the busiest airway in the world. In Europe, the aircraft was quite popular, as well and a bit later in the CIS. But in Asia it was difficult. It turned out the airlines there loved Airbus more. Also, China was helping the sales. The rapidly growing economy was buying everything. 
In the early 1990s, the Boeing 757 reached a peak in production, close to 100 units a year. In 1996, at the Farnborough Air Show, Boeing announced the modification 757-300 with a 7 meters longer fuselage and accommodating 50 more passengers. The plane also received new engines, improved avionics and passenger cabin. It was rolled out in 1998. And in 1999, the first airliners were delivered to Condor Airlines. In the early 2000s, the air transportation market experienced a crisis and the demand declined. In addition, many airlines started ordering smaller aircraft, such as Boeing 737 and Airbus A320, as these machines were more flexible in operation. And they were also cheaper. Boeing initiated the 757-200X, but the demand for this model was not sufficient. Demand continued to fall. A large-scale marketing program undertaken in 2003 brought orders for only five aircraft. Finally, when in the same year Continental Airlines, the largest potential customer, announced a large order of the Boeing 737-800, the fate of the airliner was resolved. Boeing announced the completion of production. The last 1050s Boeing 757 left the plant in 2005. Boeing 737 became a full owner of the plant in Renton. And what about safety? Basically, the aircraft is considered very reliable. There were not many serious accidents due to technical failures. But it still became famous in the history of disasters. The first incident was the air crash at Guangzhou Airport in 1990, when the Boeing 737 was hijacked and, while attempting to land, collided with a Boeing 757 on the runway. 128 people died. The most famous Boeing 757 crash occurred on September 11, 2001. On that day, the terrorists hijacked two planes at once. One of them attacked Pentagon, and the second one crashed, when passengers tried to recapture the aircraft. Now what's up with the prospects? What prospects, you may ask? The production is stopped, fly away, goodbye. Not really. The Boeing 757 never had direct competitors. In fact, its only analog, in terms of capacity, can be considered the Russian Tupolev 204. But it is not produced in the right quantities and is supplied mainly to the government structures of the Russian Federation. Even still, airlines replacing 757 with the new planes have to choose either something smaller or something bigger. The market is empty. According to the results of various studies, in the upcoming years, the market of airlines standing in capacity between the Boeing 737 and the Boeing 787, which is the 757 niche, will grow to a level sufficient enough for the manufacturers to fit it with the new models. At the moment, Boeing is working on the project NMA, New Mitsas Airplane, which is supposed to claim this role. The NMA, which is expected to be the future 797, is likely to become the next airliner of the company. We will apparently have to wait for it until the mid-2020s. So, the old Boeing 757 is slowly retiring, but soon we'll see his hire. And for now, like, subscribe and write what you're thinking about this plane. Fast flights and soft landings to you.